And we had a committee, and as happens sometimes, and I'm involved in this committee, and this is, this is not a put-down of, of what happens uh, in committee meetings. But foreign mission people here and, and home mission people here can tell you sometimes we have great meetings up there, and then the fruition or the fruit of that meeting sometimes doesn't happen. That could have very easily happened to network of prayer until it was handed to an individual instead of a committee. And that individual was Sister Tinney. And only her husband would know the hours that she has put into this. Uh, the missions department would have a concept of it. And, and as a close friend and her working out of this church, I have a small fraction of the knowledge that she has traveled week in, week out, headquarters, back from here, here to there, computers, computers, networking, putting things together. When, when you just hit your computer and say request prayer for so-and-so and you have an answer in a few minutes, you remember that just didn't happen. That's where sometimes we forget to thank God for things like this. Our network of prayer now that can literally have hundreds of thousands of people praying around the world is a result of Sister Tenny's burden. She's coming to share that with you and I wish you would give her the hand that she deserves and the appreciation. may be seated. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody needs a pastor. I have several. I guess I need several. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Anthony, for what you had to say about the network of prayer. It is working. It is working. And we haven't seen anything yet to what we're going to see. It is going to work more and more and more. Brother Waylage, are you here this morning? Is he here? Brother Waylage, he's... Uh, uh, but he is in this conference. This is one of our ministers that was in desperate need with just a terrible cancer report. And thank God... In just a matter of months now I don't know the whole story because I just found out he's here but he is it because of the times a miracle that he is even here <clears throat> it is working <clears throat> it is working there's a young couple here that came to me I'm just gonna give you this report very quickly came to me last night they have an eight-month-old child that was having epilepsy epileptic seizures three to five seizures a day this him Stand up. <clears throat> he got so desperate. This little wife came to me, his little mother came to me last night. She said, Sister Tenny, three times I frantically called for the network of prayer when my baby, it seemed, was dying. That child is here and he looks mighty healthy. No more seizures. No more seizures. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. I had another report last night. I want you to know it's working. This is not a program on paper. This is not another project. This is prayer, and prayer works. Prayer works. I had a pastor's wife say to me last night, Jeff, your son-in-law's mother was telling me a woman in their church she said, repeatedly, we have called the network of prayer. She is suffering from cancer. And she said, we didn't understand. The Lord would just touch her wonderfully, but still the reports. But she said, we may have discovered the reason for the whole thing. She has a Pakistani doctor. Her doctor's niece is coming over here with a severe problem with cancer. She witnessed to him and said, we're putting you on the world network of prayer. That Pakistani doctor broke down and wept that Christians would care enough to ask their church worldwide to pray for his niece. He has since started fasting, praying, and reading his Bible. It's working. It is working. If you don't think it works, ask Brother Stewart in Liberia when he, by just the missing of one door, 
the revolutionary soldiers missed coming in on his family. They had locked them all but one, and they stood in a room and shook and quaked while they waited for them to come through that one door. They tried every locked door and walked past the one that was unlocked. We were praying constantly all over the world during that time. It's working. It's working. It is working. Now, I have an awful lot of do, to do this morning. I, it's, it's difficult to report, talk about mechanics, and give you a, a word of inspiration at the same time. And pray. We're going to do all of that. In just a few minutes' time, we're going to do it all. Very, very quickly, I want to tell you, first of all, how much I honor and respect these people that have put this meeting together. I give respect to my husband. I give respect to our superintendent, Brother Urshan, to my mentor, Brother Barnes, to my other mentor, Sister Mangan, to my pastor, Brother Anthony, Brother Gerald, Sister Mickey, all of these wonderful people. We are part and parcel of each other. We pick up part of each other, and I thank God that he has put me here. I thank God for the ministry. Oh, what ministry. And Brother Keys, I've been waiting a long time for that message. I have been very worrisome. I've been very worrisome asking the questions. If we have the truth, if we are truly apostolic, why? I have driven him crazy. Why? Why? Why aren't we doing more? Why are our churches suffering? Why are we struggling with a few? We are going to think it. We are going to think it. We're going to believe it. We're going to pray it into reality. And God is going to give the increase. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you. You may be seated. We got to hurry. Oh, there's power here this morning. I am grateful. Grateful. I have to tell you this. Grateful for the thousands of you who have prayed for my daughter. And I don't know how the connection is. We prayed she's been down for 60 days. Critical. Almost lost her in death. But did you know that the first day of this conference was the first day she got better? Isn't that wonderful? And yesterday she had almost no pain, got out and went with her husband to go meet her son who is in college to have lunch. That's a miracle when just four days before she could not even bend her legs and could hardly walk from her bed to the bathroom. This is wonderful. God has answered another prayer. Hallelujah. And I thank you for that. I just thank you for it. Now, very briefly, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what the network is. Most of you, I hope, know, but some of you may not know. Oh, before I forget, this just came from Ethiopia. Isn't that wonderful? That's what the World Network of Prayer is doing. They're telling me in this what they're doing, how much they're praying, and what they're praying for, and how they're praying for everybody over here, and what's going on. And I got so many papers up here, they're just falling everywhere, and it's not going to bother me a bit. I am so full of whatever is going on in the spirit. There is so much to tell. I couldn't even decide what to tell. So thank God. I hear from Ethiopia. I hear from Brother Cole in Thailand with 1,500 receiving the Holy Ghost. And you know, the minute we get that, we put it out because praise reports are as important as prayer requests. And people all over the world can hit their computers and see that just last week, 1,500 people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Thailand. God is doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. So the World Network of Prayer, as you probably already know, is a hub of activity. It is the hub, the center, the, the place where we can all correspond and communicate with. We can all receive prayer requests. We can all receive praise reports. You can tune in. We have so many things to share with you that you can get it by email. You can subscribe to where just automatically once a week you're going to get the requests and the praise reports. You can have the fax back service. All of these things are available to you through the World Network of Prayer. There are some materials for you. I am having a terrible time. There's some materials and I want to show you. There's, there are these little bookmarks are in the prayer room. All of this stuff is in the prayer room. The GA Mangan Center are out in the foyer. This gives you all the access numbers. I have a wonderful assistant. <laughs> See, the reason he's such a great man, he's very humble. But pick these up, and if you don't have them, they are available. 
They are also available for you to give to your church. The access numbers, the 800 number where our volunteers take the prayer request are available. Then there is a card that is available in all these places that gives you the important dates to remember. And the most important one on there is the summons to sacrifice, August the 3rd through the 5th. Listen closely. August 3rd through 5, 1998, Airport Hilton, St. Louis, summons to sacrifice, a meeting for nothing but prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting and seeking God. We want a representative from every church, every district, and the reason being is we're going to cast the vision because we're going to do what we're going to do with the World Network of Prayer in unity. You are praying, people. I know that. But one of you is praying for Aunt Jane and the other is praying for Uncle Joe and somebody else is praying for Ethiopia. We're going to start praying in unison together for the same purpose for the big things of the kingdom. The summons to sacrifice will teach, illustrate, enhance, in, uh, inspire for those who can come. In 1999, we will not have a summons to sacrifice. I'm telling you now. You either come in 98 or you're not coming. In 99, then we're expecting people in their districts to convene a prayer and fasting conference. And for you to know how to do it so we're all doing it in one accord, we need representation there. Amen? The date is on there. The prayer guides, you will find them. Thanks to Brother Urshan, who has been wonderful with the World Network of Prayer and the Pentecostal Publishing House, we have now distributed 350,000 prayer guides to our praying people around the country. These are to give you an agenda for praying. We, play, we pray a lot of bless them prayers. Bless the missionaries. Bless my pastor. Bless this one. Bless the other one. Brother Keys, didn't you say we had to ask? He didn't say hint. He said ask. These are to help you know. How do you know how to pray for a missionary, for a leader? This is taken from scripture, written by people who are prayer warriors. There are 15 of these available. The newest one is now prayer evangelism. That is to teach our people how to pray on site with insight. We need to get out of the church. Not only for witnessing, but for praying. Check the book of Acts. Their praying took place in streets, in the jails, in the marketplace, it took place everywhere. If you're going to influence your city, you're going to have to pray all over your city. Go to the courthouse and pray. Go to the jail and pray. Go to the banks and pray. Go pray everywhere. Let's put prayer in the streets. Our latest, y'all sit down, we got a lot to cover. Brother Anthony runs this thing like I like things run. He wants it through when you're supposed to be through and going when you're going. Prayer evangelism, the newest one of our prayer guides, will give you some concepts of how to make praying in the streets and in your city and on site effectively. Hopefully, we will be able to take prayer teams into our metro cities where we're struggling to bring in works to reach thousands of people. Send people in there to put prayer in the streets, knocking holes in the heavens, letting light through on the darkness. That's what we're going to do. And then to our nations, to our nations, to our missionaries, how wonderful when a person is sent to a nation all alone, a missionary and his family, to bring in a prayer force that can spend their time praying and witnessing, praying and witnessing. It takes them both. So that's what we're doing with that. Also, over in the, uh, uh, the Man G.A. Mangan Center, you're going to find the world. We have got to raise up prayer warriors. One of the goals of the Network of Prayer is to teach children to pray. Not only children, this is very effective in a prayer room. It's a wonderful feeling, I do it myself, to hold that globe in your arms, to point to the nation that you're praying for, to teach your children that they've got to pray for more than mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa and their puppy dog, but to teach them to pray for the children of the world, for the others of the world. These are there, they're very inexpensive. It adds to your prayer room and to teaching children how to pray. Also over there is the book that Terry, my daughter and I, the one who has been so sick, put together. It is a manual. It is not a book just to be read. It is a manual on how to get involved in prayer ministry. They will give you pages, over 200 pages of ideas how to make prayer more enhanced, 
more effective and to involve and motivate more people in your prayer ministry. If you have noticed the prayer room in the back, and I hope you have, what we have back there we call either a prayer walk, you can do a prayer walk in many ways, or a visible prayer agenda. How many of you know this church is a praying church? <clears throat> I will have to tell you that when we started to set the prayer room up, and I just, I thank Brother Anthony for the privilege of doing that. It was so rewarding to me. And I thought, well, I don't know how these people are going to take to this. They prayed in that prayer room for years and years. They have their own pattern down. So when we got it set up, where is a visible prayer agenda? I'll tell you what happened. People that had struggled to spend their three hours in prayer, they struggle no more. There is purpose in their prayers. They pray for everything in that room, one place to another. And believe me, you could spend all day long praying for just the things that are there. If you want to teach your people how to pray effectively, furnish them with the tools so they learn how to pray, as well as telling them they've got to pray, give them the tools so they can pray and make it more effective. In this notebook that I just showed you, gives you the basic ideas on setting up a prayer room, and then I am available for any way that I can help you. There is, and I have it here somewhere, it probably fell off, but we have a picture. In the prayer room back here, you will notice a picture that is there by where they pray for the pastors of this church, and it is a praying man's wonderful picture. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I am sure that you can't see this from where you are. This is a small one. But I have a very limited number of these that are available for sale for a simple $20. That's very inexpensive. They're size 20 by 20. You can see them framed in the prayer room. There are also prayer rings, and I don't know whether they brought them to me or not. I'll tell you about them. There are five of them in a set. We are taught to pray by the Scripture. That's the strongest praying you can pray. Pray in the Scriptures. There are five of these. They're like fixed on a key ring, and they are totally scriptural prayers. How to pray for your pastor, how to pray for your wife, how to pray for your husband, how to pray for your children. They are wonderful in helping people. You can take that. Do you know, I have to tell you the truth. When I use my prayer ring to pray for my husband, many times I can only get through half of it. There is so much that it covers. I'm talking about effective praying, not just blessing prayers or hum hoeing around and calling it praying. I'm talking about speaking words. Faith comes through using the Word of God and speaking it out. So those are just some of the helps that I have put together to help you, and I'll be glad to share any of the rest of it with you that I possibly can and help you in any way. But the World Network of Prayer is designed to become a powerful entity, a powerful army of people that are all praying. We have had the greatest harvest in 1996 and 1997 that we've ever had in the United Pentecostal Church. That was not accidental. There has not been one major crusade that has not been well covered with a signed prayer. Now, I'm sorry if you have trouble with talking about a signing prayer and about uh, praying specifically. It's scriptural. Jesus didn't give us the Lord's Prayer for us to memorize and get a star on a card in a Sunday school class. He gave that to us as an agenda to pray. And I want to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That is the will of God. So every crusade has been well covered with a signed prayer. Every committee that has met on any sort of important business for the church has been covered by prayer. May I just say, because this is mostly ministry here, I am bothered when we spend hours working on projects and hours in business sessions and hours doing other business of the church and have a five-minute prayer. That is not apostolic. We have got to cover everything we do by prayer. We've got to ask for wisdom. I believe God can speak and do and move right in the middle of business sessions, but he's not going to do it until we invite him to do it. We have covered every board meeting. The general conference has been covered. If you were there this year, we had people that walked in off of the street, just walked in off of the street into the prayer room wandering through that huge convention center and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Had never been to one of our churches before. 
just walked in. That's what prayer does. Prayer puts the power in what we're trying to do. Our plans and our projects can be superseded by many people, but prayer will make our plans and projects be propelled with the thrust of the eternal spirit of God, and it will know no end. I'm sold on what I'm doing. I believe in what I'm doing. Do I have time to do what I'm doing? Of course I don't. I don't have any more time than you do. But this is a priority. It has to be done. I was asked to do this. I will do it with all my might. I will do it with all of my might. And I know that you're going to follow and together we are going to become a strategic effective network directly linking our missionaries, our mission fields, our national leaders, our North American churches, our leaders, our evangelists, our pastors, everybody by prayer. Now there has to be some mechanics to it. You've got to get in touch with the World Network of Prayer. If you want to know what to pray for, you're going to have to get in touch with us. We're just a clearinghouse. We're not directing anything. We're just the clearinghouse. That's all. Some place, a central place where people can send requests and where we can pray together for the same things. It is impossible for us to write every one of you a letter. We don't have the funds. We don't have the time. We only have one person who's full time. Sister Beverly Feathers. And then we have help here in the local office. But we only have just a very little bit of help. But if you will put forth the effort, check it out on internet. It's there. We had one woman that was witnessed to because of the internet and received the Holy Ghost. Came to church that weekend and received the Holy Ghost. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Subscribe by email. Or write our office and say, please send us the request once a week, once a month. It's usually two or three pages and praise reports are in it. So I want to tell you that the World Network of Prayer is alive and well and doing good. Somewhere there is also another list that was put together by Linnell Jones, who worked with me very closely. She did all the pretty stuff back in the prayer room, and she has a list of where she got those particular things. Okay, I want to make the United Pentecostal Church the United Praying Church. I want us to become such a people of prayer that when we see UPC, we not only think you United Pentecostal, but we think United Praying Church. And if and when we do become that, believe me, there will not be any place too hard for us when we unite around prayer. The Holy Ghost first fell on leadership and saints in a prayer meeting. It did not fall in a committee meeting, and it did not fall in a conference. It fell in a prayer meeting. Prayer meeting was the first thing that developed the, per the church of the New Testament. We must pray. We must pray. We know that. And now we're trying to help you to know how to pray. And the reason we must pray is so that we can fulfill the purpose of the church, which is evangelization. The back door of the prayer room is the front door to evangelism. It is a two-pronged effort. If you think you're going to become a monk and go hide away somewhere and pray till the end of the world, you're not going to do the will of God. You pray so there is power to witness. You pray so there is power to witness. The church was blown out of their prayer meeting into the streets. And the great revival of that first day of Pentecost did not come in the prayer room. It became because they were in the prayer room, but it happened in the streets. Prayer and evangelism absolutely go together. One without the other is not complete. Prayer without evangelism is like a detonator with no explosive. And evangelism without prayer is like an explosive and no detonator. But you've got to have both to put them together. And when you do, you can blow the gates of hell off their hinges. Either that or the scripture's not true. And God be true and every man a liar. If we get prayer in its proper priority and evangelism where it ought to be, we can blow this church this all over this world in a massive outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Maybe Sister, Sister Mangan, Sister Mangan, she's more graceful than I am. This is the way she does. It was on the way to a prayer meeting that the miracle of the lame man made street witnessing powerful. They were going to a prayer meeting, 
But what happened on the street is what I'm trying to show you very quickly that you've got to put it together. And it was from a place of a shaking prayer meeting where boldness and great power added to their witness and preaching and resulted in multitudes coming in and adequate finances for every need. Brother Keys, I'm referring to you again. The revival that has come to his church has also loosed finances in a way you cannot believe. And I believe it was Brother Keys at our general conference, one of our prayer services in the morning, that said we are not to the end of our ability. We are only to the end of our burden. There is enough money in the United Pentecostal Church to do anything this church needs to do. And if that is not true, God's word is not true. Because he promised that he would supply what we needed to get the job done. We have got to see it. And when we increase prayer, we will increase giving, we will increase evangelism, and you cannot do one without the other. I just have a very few minutes left, and I think that's why I struggle so. I have so much I won't tell you. You'd get tired of listening, but I would never get tired of telling it to you. My text for today, and I'm not a preacher, but I got a text. Acts 6 and 1. And in those days, when the multitude of disciples were multiplied, or when the number of, of disciples were multiplied, and in those days, when the number of disciples were multiplied. Now, the text out of that is those days. Now, you see, I'm not Mike Williams. My, what a message. Brother Keys, my husband, you're going to hear the greatest man in the world in just a few minutes. Sister Mangan, they're all eloquent. My text is those days. And that's where we are. We are living in those days. Now let me tell you, and very quickly, I, I don't have time to even go through my, my notes here. I'm just going to have to pull it out of my heart. But there are always today words. There was a today word for the Israelites. The psalmist picked it up. The writer of Hebrews picked it up four times. He said, today. Today, today, there is a now word. We're living in a today. We have our today, those days. Now the reason, and I could not get away from this. This has eaten me up. We have lived to see. See, I'm an old timer. I don't look like it, but I am. I have been in this. I was born with my mother preaching. I was telling Sister Mangan and the missionaries, my mother preached a five-month revival seven nights a week when she was pregnant with me. So if you want to know what happened to me, that's it. But I'll tell you what, I will be forever grateful. She was so sick every day that she hardly gained any weight taking care of children and washing my father's one pair of pants that he had to wear to church every single day and ironing them and go in that pulpit and preach. But at the end of that revival, there were 96 people that had received the Holy Ghost and they built a church that is still going forward so you see, I believe that I am an old timer. Whether I look like it or not, I am an old timer. I would never have dreamed, Brother Anthony, that I would be a part of a church that had 2,500 people in Sunday school last week. I remember the first brick church we ever had. But now we are living in those days when the number of disciples has multiplied. And the second part of my text, and I have about five to six minutes. The second part of my text, well, I'm feeling like a preacher. Acts 6 and 4. Acts 6 and 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Now, you see, in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, they had to make some executive decisions administrative decisions and the first administrative decision that the New Testament church made was that leadership would give themselves to prayer first and the ministry of the word now you've heard that text used a lot we will give ourselves to the ministry to prayer and the ministry of the word but we have come to a point where we have got to reappraise our mode of operation we have got to reset our agendas 
You cannot, you're not living in the days when I grew up, when we had 25 and 30 in Sunday school and maybe 75 and when you got to 100, you had a big church. We're not living in those days. And from what I have felt and felt the Holy Ghost saying in this meeting, we're fixing to have an explosion in our churches and we're gonna lose the harvest if we're not ready for it. Sit down. Everybody reach in your pocket right now and get your day timer. If you've got a calendar, a day timer, a notebook, anything you got, you reach in your pocket and you put on there for Monday morning or Saturday or Sunday or probably all of them. Put at the top of the page, Acts 6 and 1 and Acts 6 and 4. And I wish that you would take your notebook, your calendar, whatever, and on every day for the rest of this year would write at the top of every page, Acts 6 and 4, Acts 6 and 4, Acts 6 and 4. We will give ourselves. Now then, very quickly, because I can't do it like I wanted to, I'm just going to give you my heart now. They had to make a two-pronged decision. A two-pronged decision. They had to decide what they were going to do and what was the most important thing for them to do as leadership. And when they decided, they called the church together they presented the program to the church. We can't keep doing what we're doing. If we do, we're going to hinder the work of the church. And pastors and pastors' wives, if we keep doing what we've always done, we're always going to have what we've always had. It is time to reappraise our agendas. And we're multiplied and we've got to look at it from a new perspective now. And they called them together. They had trouble in the church. There was grumbling, murmuring, carrying on. They did not mean talk their saints. They didn't talk ugly and hard about the saints because they were murmuring and grumbling. Don't they know I'm doing everything I can? I'm stressed out. I'm worked out, all this stuff. No, they said, come together with us and you help us. We are going to be partners in this ministry. And they looked out seven men from among them to take over the administrative duties. And then they not only had to have administration abilities, but they had to be spiritual people. And then, and this is very important, then they appointed and anointed and gave them public recognition. Now this is not too spiritual, but it's right. It is right. I have seen it work in this church. I have seen it work in other places. We have got to reappraise our agenda. We have got to appoint and anoint and set ourselves to doing the priority of directing with prayer. Now, very, very quickly, let me show you what happened. The circle of the church began to enlarge immediately. Immediately. Stephen. Stephen not only was the first martyr, but Stephen influenced Saul. Stephen also set the agenda for the whole church. He introduced the thought for the first time in written form in the New Testament church that God was bigger than any one place and any one people, that he was ready to reach the whole world. They enlarged, the, the whole atmosphere was enlarged. Philip goes down to Samaria. Now Peter is mentioned as going, and I'm having to just jump through this. But if you will check from verse chapter 6 to chapter 10, there is the prominence of the laity. Peter and John went to Samaria because they had to go. It was a business trip for leadership. And when they got down there and saw the circle of influence that the lay leadership in touching that city of, of Samaria, what had happened, you know what? It changed their agenda. Because when they left Samaria, they went back preaching through the villages of Samaria and they had never done that before. Now let me show you quickly what happened. Philip ends up back up at Caesarea, and then you know that's where Cornelius lived. There's influence coming. Ananias flees Jerusalem and ends up in Damascus, and that's where Paul goes. The circle is increasing, and it is increasing because leadership decided to pray it into being and to loose the laity, appoint and anoint, and you're putting prayer and evangelism together. Without one, you can't do the other adequately. You have to have both of them. And the World Network of Prayer can do that. It can help you do that. So it ends up that all of these things are happening. And what has happened when after they make the decision, and I'll wrap this up, after they make this decision, that church 
had changed from Acts chapter 2. Now, without chapter 1, there would have been no chapter 2. But in Acts chapter 2, I checked this in several translations, those wonderful scriptures that we love, where they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers and in gladness of heart and singleness of heart. And the Lord added to them such as should be saved. The scripture really says, the original says, he added to them those that were being saved. You know what they were really doing in Acts 2? They were fellowshipping together. They were staying together. They were teaching and, and preaching and, and eating and visiting and just all together, just following each other around, just in a herd, just following around. When they changed their executive decision, the addition becomes multiplication. They impacted the religious world of their day because there was a great company of priests that believed. There also they touched the, the Saul who became the Apostle Paul and the worst persecutor becomes a proponent of the gospel. They cracked the military, they cracked the government, and they cracked business. Simon the sorcerer was a businessman. He was making money. They cracked the business world. They cracked all of those things. They cracked the military. Yes, Brother Anthony, go pray with our president. The government needs it. Yes, Brother Johnson, win that businessman down there. The church needs his resources. We have got to put our apostolic agenda together. And the apostolic agenda tells me that all of you in the place of leadership needs to rearrange your daily agenda to where prayer is the most prominent thing that you do and you oversee the work of God through the power of prayer. And at the same time, you loose the laity. And you appoint and you anoint. And you follow up to do what they're doing. I'm through, Brother Anthony. The World Network of Prayer is an awesome thing. Please join with us and let's become a part of a mighty force where we will pray such such unified prayers that God will honor what we are doing. She's always been a good speaker, but I think since she started this network of prayer, she's just turned into a dynamite speaker. I want 